At the school's carnival, carnival, one game featured this unique square dartboard with five smaller shaded squares shown here. The length of the side of the square dartboard is four times the length of the side of the five congruent shaded squares. To win a prize, a player's dart has to land in a shaded region, which is these five congruent shaded squares. If a player's dart randomly hits the dartboard, what is the probability of her or him winning a prize? So, well, count the probability that the player's dart, because because the special thing is that where it's hitting it at random. So it's kind of like you close your eyes, aim the gun, and shoot. So that's random. Probability that the dart will hit one of the shaded regions. Well, that's just a successful, which is, again, the dart hits one of these squares over the possible, which is just the number of points in this grid. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Number of points in this grid. Well, there's infinite points in this grid, right? And it's the same with the success. We have the same problem with the successes. There are infinite points in each one of these five shaded regions. So if we just do this, well, then the probability will be infinite out of infinite. And that's just one. Of course, the probability is not one because there's all this, there's this giant shaded region out there. And there's just, there's this big kind of cross shape thing out there that's not shaded. And there's infinite points in that area too. So there's infinite points that hit, um, there's infinite points that we can choose that hit, um, um, that are in this, that, that are in one of the shaded regions. And there are infinite points we can choose, like, there's infinite points we can choose that are not shaded. So we can't count the number of ways, but we can measure them. And this is called geometric probability, where, where we use geometry to count the number of ways to count, to count successes and possible outcomes because we can't, we can't count the number of them, but we can count the region because there may be infinite points in a region, but they're all in that region. So we can count or measure with geometry the area of one of these regions that contain infinite points. So now we're not counting. We're not counting anymore. We're measuring. So, which means if we measure this, that, that just means we're going to take the area of these five squares out of the area of this large square, because again, the success is the five little squares, the possible just this big square. But there's a problem. We can't, we can't figure out the area of these small squares either. Because all we know is that the big square um, is, uh, the side length of the big square is four times the side length of the small square. Just say that's x, which, because again, x can be anything, but hey, X is our side length. We can just use variables. X, X. All these other squares are, they have length X. So each of these squares, you just have X squared area. Meaning, each square has area X squared, and there are five of those little squares, meaning the success is just five X squared. And the possible. Only, I only know each, each one of the large side lines is just 4x, meaning this is 4x. Because again, read this problem carefully. This is a square, meaning these two side lines, these two side lines are equal. Meaning just square 4x, which is 16x squared. We can just cancel these. Just have 5 over 16. Read the problem again, key step at the end of the word problem, especially a long word problem like this. The player's dart randomly hits the dartboard. That's what probably, probably means we're, we're randomly selecting something out of another group. 
What is the probability of her winning a prize? Of course, winning a prize is just the dark lions in one of these shaded regions. And as we know, we can use geometric probably, probability to figure that out.